if you put a thermoval in any line and there is flow, there is one important phenomenon that will happen. Vortices will be created and these vortices will cause the thermoval to vibrate. If the frequency of vibration is equivalent to your resonant frequency, then you know what happens? Bad things happen. If you see here, this is an actual picture taken in the year 1995, just before the accident where a thermoval caused an entire nuclear plant to shut down. Let us look at what Wikipedia had to say. So if you see here, an intense vibration caused a thermoval inside a pipe carrying sodium coolant to break and that led to a rated level 1 incident. So in this video, we are going to learn two important points. The first thing is how to pass a thermoval through wave frequency calculation. What are the two criteria? And in the second part, we will learn the exceptions to the rule, which is known to a very few engineers. In order to understand thermoval wave frequency calculation, we must understand the relation between frequency ratio and stress. If you see at this graph, if you understand this graph, then the entire wave frequency calculation will become very easy. If you look here for a thermoval, at this point you can see has the highest amount of stress. This is what we must avoid. But at what frequency ratio we get the highest stress? Frequency ratio is nothing but the thermoval frequency upon the resonant frequency. What we had seen initially, for example, the thermoval frequency which is caused through the vortices and the natural resonant frequency. When these two become equal, then the frequency ratio will become 1 and this is not good. In our graph, when the frequency ratio is 1, you will have the highest amount of stress and that is what as an engineer we must try to take care in our wake frequency calculation. You might assume that in the ASMA PTC 19.5, the first criteria should have been that the frequency ratio must not be equal to 1. But this is not the criteria. The criteria is that the frequency ratio must be less than 0.8. But from where did 0.8 come into picture? In order to understand that concept, ASMA PTC calls this as lock-in range. What it means is, in simple example, let's take a boat which is traveling and there is a tornado. Now, at the center, you will have the highest force. Let us imagine to be our resonant frequency of 1. But even if the boat is lingering around in its perimeters, maybe example at very near, the tornado can suck the boat. So even imagine if you are going at the tornado's very near proximity, you can be sucked inside. If you see it in our graph, 1 is here. So 0.8 is very much near to it. So the ASME PTC says that for this much lock-in range, you must avoid the second reason for it is also safety margin because you need to also consider for the manufacturing tolerances, assumptions in the equation. So taking all into account instead of one, the criteria of first criteria of ASME PTC is that the frequency ratio must be less than 0.8. If this criteria is followed, then you pass the first criteria of ASME PTC. Now, if the first criteria is passed, then why is there even a need for second criteria? What is the reason? If you look at the accident, what we saw at the start of the video, the thermoval which failed actually had passed the ASME PTC criteria of 1974. Then still, how did that thermoval fail in the nuclear plant? The thermoval failed because the thermoval did cater for the vortices and their frequency but did not care for the static forces. The static forces were also hitting the thermoval but because the stress was less it was not taken into consideration. If you see in our graph at this point here which is half of the resonant frequency you have the static forces which are continuously acting on the thermoval. These forces might not initially be more but as time passed by the frequency of these vibrations caused the thermoval to fail and that was taken into account and the recent ASME PTC 19.3 with the 2016 version takes care for this frequency as well. But again similar to the lock-in range example and the safety margin what is given in the standard instead of 0.5 ASME PTC has come with a smarter criteria. The smarter criteria is instead of having 0.5 it says between 0.4 and 0.6 the thermoval must not be in this frequency zone. This is how you get to your second criteria. The two criteria which we saw were the first one is that the frequency ratio must be less than 0.8 
and the second criteria we saw was the frequency ratio must not be between the range of 0.4 to 0.6 if a thermowell passes through both these criteria then you say that your thermowell has passed the wake frequency calculation but as we saw there are certain exceptions with the help of those things you can actually supersede these two criteria as per the asme ptc standard what are these exceptions the reason is what if the thermowell has power to basically dampen the vibrations in and of itself and this is calculated with a number called as crouton number the higher the crouton number the better will be the vibration resistant capacity of a particular thermowell if you want to learn about that and the entire summary of the video of exactly what scruton number is then i have made an entire pdf guide the link is given in the comment section and in the video description so you can learn in depth of what is scruton number and exactly how the entire wake frequency calculation happens